Oh, I just, uh, right now I just got, a, I just accepted a Uber ride. All right, so I'm gonna turn my lights on and let's bounce. Aaron McLaughlin is new to Uber. Basically made $5.47. If you can get four or five trips done an hour, you know, you can make a 25 bucks an hour, whatever it is, that adds up. You work four hours, you know, you make a hundred bucks in a day, you know, that'll pay a bill. Up until a couple weeks ago, the $58,000 a year he makes as an officer at the federal prison in Mendota, California, was enough to support him and his family. But because of the shutdown, McLaughlin won't get a paycheck next week. It's gut-wrenching. I picked up a secondary job driving Uber. Is it embarrassing? Yeah, it is. I'm a federal employee, but yet I've got to kind of sink down a little bit and say, you know what, I've got to swallow my pride and I've got to get behind the wheel of my little car and I've got to drive around and shuttle people around like a taxi cab driver just so I know that when I don't get paid next week and my mortgage is due or my, my food, I got to put food on the table or they're going to, PG&E's going to cut off my power for lack of payment. I've got to have something there. The Federal Bureau of Prisons employs 40,000 workers nationwide, most of whom are deemed essential. That means they still have to go to work during a shutdown. They're just not going to be paid until it's over. McLaughlin and his colleagues at other Central California prisons say prison staff are already stretched. How is the government shutdown and the fact that you're not getting a paycheck affecting you guys on a daily basis? I live paycheck to paycheck, so... This has a huge impact on me. Um, and in the next few weeks, uh, I'm going to be struggling. This is my third shutdown in seven years. I am a pair of child support, you know, and I'm glad to do so. It, you know, takes care of my daughter, but I can't make that payment. It's so inhumane. The response to that is they put recommendations, call your landlord, you know, ask if you could mow the lawn for rent, you know, I mean, I'm surprised there wasn't a suggestion to prostitute yourself on there. You know what I mean? That's how degrading it was. How is the shutdown affecting your colleagues and sort of the prisons more broadly? Gosh, I, I, I get probably 15 to 20 calls a day from my members uh, with issues that this is causing. It goes anywhere from can't pay their mortgages, can't pay their bills, the late payment fees, um, to the medical issues. Uh, we have some uh, staff members uh, battling cancer right now. Uh, their medical bills are racking up. They can't pay them. Are they going to still be able to receive treatment? Traveling, uh, I work in a place where a lot of people travel a great distance. I, I travel an hour and 15 minutes to get to work every day. Um, so I average about $500 a month in gas. I know personally I can't afford the gas once the shutdown goes in the long term. Uh, the majority of staff are in the same boat. Everybody's scared. They don't know what the hell's going on because this is different than 2013. We all went through the 2013 shutdown and it was 16 days. There was a different sense in Washington. They wanted to reopen. There's not that sense right now. I think also that on the, on the Hill, that there's um, notions that we're overpaid. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of these people are not willing to help us, because uh, somebody up there on the Hill is telling them that we're all good and, there's, and we don't need any help. Well, I want to ask you about that, actually, because the president seems to maybe believe that, too. And he said, this is more important than a paycheck. You know, federal workers would tell me to keep going. I, I was very insulting. Yeah. Now, I'm, I completely disagree. I'm a veteran. A I fought in Iraq. I've, I've served my country. I've taken life for this country. And you ran on that campaign. You said, quote, I'm going to take care of the uh, veterans and I'm going to take care of law enforcement. Yeah, I right. haven't seen it. With all due respect to the president of the United States, I have not seen it. Earlier this year, we received... Um, a whole bunch of immigration detainees. And uh, this was part of his zero tolerance policies. Um, we didn't ask for it, we didn't want it. And now the things that we're getting from the president is uh, no paycheck, uh, it's disgraceful. And the fact that, uh, my opinion, is that if he's gonna go up there and uh, speak on that behalf of uh, federal employees, come to Victorville, see us and, and listen to us before you speak on our behalf. Were you guys all Trump supporters in 2016? I actually voted for him I based did. on his I did too. based on his campaign promise that he was going to take care of law enforcement and veterans and the working man. And he's let me down. I supported Trump with the basis of, you know, you watch his campaigning and he says, "I'm for the American worker. I want better border security." And then every, as his, as his presidency started going on, I'm sitting back thinking, "Okay, uh, now you're backpedaling on what you said. You want to drain the swamp." And, and my whole thing in the beginning was when you drain the swamp, you're talking about the politicians. 
As we speak right now in Washington, D.C., congressmen and senators are still getting paid. They're not affected by this shutdown. They still get their paychecks. Do you guys all want a wall? I I'll, mean, I'll, I'll go out on the limb. Uh, I'll say we work in a prison. We work within walls. Walls work. And walls work. Well, I'll say this much. A wall is a tool. If you don't have the staff inside of it and you're not paying your staff, you're not doing those things, the walls don't mean shit, sure. yeah. period. So if, if this is all just about a wall, it's gonna fail, in my opinion. Um, but if he's gonna staff and, and, and pay the people and put the right equipment on the walls, the cameras, whatever you, you, what we have inside the prisons, it could be a tool that could be effective. I support building a wall, but I don't support shutting the government down and not paying people because it's over here, it's a pissing contest. You can have the tallest wall in the world, but if you don't have the staff, right. why not try to compromise? Why not say, you know what? Let's increase Border Patrol. Let's rotate National Guard units in, and let's see if that works. It, it sounds like you might be in favor of a wall. A wall might be a good idea, but this it's not worth it at this point. No. Not, not, at, my, not at my check. Not, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think it's worth shit if I can't feed my family.